additions to the agenda appropriation ordinance 1202 2013 in the amount of 10,263.23 and Christmas light discount. Move to approve. Second. Any additions? We're just ready. Also need to add. Does anybody does anybody else need to add anything besides what's on the list? Okay, I would like to add an executive session at, um, at the beginning of after Terry Welch's comments, um, and I'm not entirely sure. be non-elected personnel, but there's not a specific individual involved. Would it be a position? Yeah, that would be fair. Position. How long did you say? Um, Ten minutes. Second. Well, we already had a, yeah. a motion. Are there any other additions? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Consent agenda. Approved minutes of the regular meeting of 11 19 2013. Approve appropriation ordinance 11 26 2013 in the amount of 74,848 22. Approve appropriation ordinance 1203 2013 in the amount of, I don't have a total there, but general fund of 10,520,205, meter deposit fund 334.87, solid waste 46.56, electric and water and light fund 44.653.11, and electric and water surplus $600. And then approve appropriation ordinance 1202-2013 in the amount of 10,263.23. Goes to what? Solid waste. What was the total amount? 56. 156. 59. So good. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries for them. Mr. Welch. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> well, I guess I guess everybody knows what's going on. Uh, we had a uh, 19 and 93, the uh, they put a group together and, and figured out what they wanted to do in lieu of closing the, the local landfill. The state, the state was demanding it, so they put a committee together and they, uh, and they anyway, they mandated to begin with everybody in the county, in the county has to have trash service. And uh, of course later on the farmers kind of got off of that, you know. But uh, they still mandated that, that everybody in all the municipalities be on trash service, and uh, at that time they funded it. They paid mileage to to Mr. Wellman and uh, and, a t and a tipping fee, and then some somehow later before we took it over, the, it got turned over to where the county paid the tipping fee, and they still paid the mileage. That's as it stood when we took it over 14 years ago, and uh, and it actually. In, in, last, in the last year, that amount was $88,000. Now that's to all three haulers in the county. We have, uh, we have a competitor in the north part of the county, and we have, and, uh, we have Mr. Nisman. Uh, at any rate, they've defunded that, the county commissioners have. And uh, the mandate is still there, but they, they've just defunded it, so we've, we've got to have, have another approach. And, and there's no way the rates aren't going to go up, no matter who's, you know, no matter who serves the citizens. It really, you know, uh, 
it's it's a matter of amount. Uh, actually, I'll point out some things that we do. Uh, uh, and I compare this with Hud with Hudson, and then I compare this with Hutchison. Uh, if we see this, we pick it up. We don't make any extra charges. Bring care of sure, well. <clears throat> In Hoisington, I, I actually talked to the city manager, and, and this was just on the route. It wasn't like a moving out or anything. Mm -hmm. He said that would cost those people an extra forty dollars. Well, and the one, on, and the one on the bottom would have been twenty. Mm -hmm. And when the, when these guys uh, who do these big carts, when when their driver has to get out, there's a charge. Uh, if we see it, we get. It. If uh, you know, we leave our trucks out there, we try to leave a, an empty dumpster and openings in the trucks. Uh, the, the landfill out here can't accept can't accept waste anymore, so we try to leave that stuff available. Uh, and we pack them trucks four or five times a weekend. Now, I will say that probably a good bit of that comes from outside of town. The thing that gets the most attention is uh, dumpster north of the short stuff. <laughs> Sharing knows what I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, we don't, you know, we've never charged people for that. Uh, uh, don't really want to because I'm not going to sit out there and, and nurse those trucks and see who's doing it. Uh, and I don't expect Adam or any of the police to do it. It's actually theft of services when they do it. I, mean, I can't see prosecuting somebody over a bag of trash. Uh, when, when people, you know, when when people are cleaning out a house, uh, and their kids come home on a weekend, somebody may have passed away, somebody may be moving, they're cleaning out the house, and they've got two days to do it. If they'll get a hold of me, I just take the truck over, because it's actually there's an advantage to me in that, because my guys aren't going to pick up out of the alley, and we don't charge for that. Uh, I don't know how often somebody else would run around, but some some business have to be served every day to run. That'd be hospitals, rest homes, uh, schools, grocery stores, and we do do that. And right now, uh, we don't. We've never put any tonnage charges on. It's just a flat charge, uh, and of course. <laughs> uh, I'm not, I don't want to insult any of the city managers, but the streets in these towns aren't just the strongest when you get up next next to the gutters. And uh, so we stay in the island as much as we can so we don't destroy the streets. And that's, and that's, uh, that's pretty much why we run a three-man operation on the truck instead of, instead of a side load. Besides that, side loads uh, in a good wind, uh, they lose a lot of stuff. It goes like everywhere, uh, and you know we we after spring cleanup we will go around for mail and pick stuff up. You know, uh, sometimes it's not much. Sometimes, it, and every once in a while, if we see a piece of furniture that's been sitting out in the weather for one a couple or three weeks, my guys will grab it, and then we hope we don't do wrong when we do it. I wonder where my couch was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably had it sold to somebody and they were going to pick it up, right? Probably when you were going to sleep. I was eyeballing that for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but here's, here's a couple of these right here. Uh, we're actually on a par with Hoisington as we speak. Their rates are going up the first of the year because the Barton County landfill raised their rate. Uh, it's a, and their their residential rates are just about like ours, just almost the same. Unless you get an extra, if, if you're like this, or if you get an extra cart, uh, then it goes up to twenty four dollars. If uh, if you put stuff out beside it. They charge, I don't know, it can be anywhere from a dollar to a hundred dollars. And they do this they do the same way uh, over in Hutchinson and, uh, and 
and any other place, Mr. Nisley or, or waste management or any of them, sir. We don't do that. So at Christmas time when there's trash bags upon trash bags? We figure it's our job just to get it, you know. Besides that, I'm not going to run around the front of the house and see what the address is. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I know my guys on the back of the truck won't do this, so. Uh, at any rate, uh, there's about, near as I can judge, we have about 1,562 uh, customers all over the county. And uh, actually, and that's our, sh our share, wait a minute, let's see if I can find this. This is, this is what we hauled in, in the first ten and a half months, and I projected it out. And uh, the, uh, now these are from Reno County, and they cannot be accurate because they don't know our routes. But uh, they figure out, a, I figure out a St. John, you know, about 550 tons a year. And that's it. You know, the whole, the whole amount I'm talking about here for this tonnage is around $52,000. That I have to make up. The mileage that they were paying us, uh, we can absorb that. Pretty well, pretty sure we can. So this is what we have to make up, and that that gets split amongst everybody in the county. That's the best. That's the best and fairest way to do it. But I need to go back and uh, and I will have to put some little tonnage charges on on some of these businesses. Uh, the rest home, you know, it has a unit here in Stafford. Uh, nearly, nearly as I can judge, we haul 130 tons from them every year. Well, I, but I, it's it's real trash too. Uh, so you're going to have just because my dumpster is the same size as Troy's dumpster, it's not going to be the same fee. No, no, no. Uh, if he if he has more trash, well, no, heavier no. trash. Uh, yeah, when it, when it, when I do this, uh, I want it I want it up high enough. I mean, we go we go out to where Troy, out to Troy's there every once in a while, and you know, do a clean up. You know, and, I mean, you've you we've gone back and dumped yours, you know, mm -hmm. extra. Mm -hmm. uh, we just figured that's part of the job. Absolutely. And we don't we uh, no, uh, you know, uh, you pay what forty four twenty five a month, something like that. I would have it. Oh well, and that's what they pay out. No, I think you guys got a three yard. Yeah, but uh, we don't do that. The only the only place I would I, I'm going to consider doing that is 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 where I mean where you get 130 tons and you go there four times a week. That's a little different service than coming to you once a week and coming back if you need us. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that four yard dumpster over there in Stafford, my small truck won't even pick it up. You know, that's how heavy it gets. Uh, and uh, and I noticed that uh, that we've been undercharging on uh, on quite a few other commercial accounts, and uh, so I, I need to go back and you know do some of this refiguring. But two dollars and eighty cents is is what it takes me to break it. But that's on everybody. I actually thought about uh, about like a senior discount, you know, not even raising. Not even raising it for people 65 and over, of which I am one. But and I actually do pay a trash bill. <laughs> but I found out that that's not really uh, legal. That's age. That's kind of reverse age discrimination. And if I did that, there there would be people your age yelling at me. At any rate, one of the one of the proposals I have. Uh, is got me pieces of all this stuff. I didn't bring enough for everybody. I don't see that. Are we gonna thing. just set a date for other people to give proposals? Well, I'm not. I'm not prepared to give a proposal. Okay. Uh, I've yeah, got two we'll or three. Go out to bed for services. Actually, we'll actually, actually none of all, uh, my current contract with the county ends March 31st. And for me, you know. Uh, I don't really, at the same time, correct? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I don't. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I don't know when your is your contract up in February. No, March. 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 Just same time. Well, yeah. Uh, I would I would want to make a couple three proposals 
to let you folks look at them before I, uh, you know, before I give you something solid. Uh, I, all I can say is there's, there's, you know, there's going to be a written piece one way or the other. I'll just leave all this. Oh stuff yeah, that's got to be. Well, and, and, uh, yeah, the, the, the one thing I don't understand, and uh, I don't know, maybe somebody can, you know, clue me in, but the commissioners said they can't afford that eighty-eight thousand dollars. Well, that's that's quite likely, but then they said April first they were going to rescind that eighty-eight thousand dollars off taxes, so they wouldn't have it either way. And I don't, I just, you know, I don't get that. <laughs> and my, my impression of the whole thing was that, you know, it's a general tax all over the whole county. When it first, when it initially uh, tried, when the committee initially set this up, they intended to apply that tax only to households. But I think they found out that they couldn't do that. They had to tax the whole county. So, so in fact, anybody who uh, uh, anybody in the county, everybody in the county is paying taxes on it. And uh, and so when the people would haul stuff in, you know, from out of the country, not the customers, just you know, uh, we were getting that paid for. It wasn't really costing us anything. Uh, and I'm not sure I'd even want to put put a stop to it now. You know. Uh, I'd have, I might, if I were to do it, if I were to do that, I might have to take some strenuous steps. I just, I don't want to do it. Uh, but I'd like, you know, I just, I just want to have enough to go on as before. You know, if somebody's got a problem on the weekend, they can get a hold of me. I will fix it. Uh, I clean out a lot of freezers. <laughs> And I'm usually the one that gets to go do it, too. Jerry, <coughs> quick question here. This $2.80, is that per customer? It doesn't sound like a lot. But, uh, but it's over $30 a year. Is that, uh, I'm not getting into your business, has that got some, has that got some stuff over, figured into it to update some equipment? No, that's just break even. Period. If I want to update equipment, I'll amortize it in some way. You know. So you're saying two dollars and eighty cents per per customer per month per month per month. Yep. Well, but that's just that's just breaking even on the tipping fees. I've run trucks quite a while, and I know the trucks are expensive for me. Yeah, well. But I really think if you're going to do that, you ought to, you ought to do some figuring on it. Because yeah. you're going to have to update some equipment. Yeah, well, see, there, yeah, there's, well, I know that. Uh, and uh, I, uh, and, you know, I might have to, have, I might even have to go a little higher uh, on this. I just don't, I just don't want to. I just, boy, I hate this. Uh, okay. <coughs> yeah, I might. I, I need to replace one truck probably. It, it, it's got a good motor and it runs well and all that stuff, but I get tired of working on it. And actually, not yesterday was so nice. I spent time under two of them. <coughs> but one of the things I'd like to do would be to uh, to get some large containers. Uh, I mean, eight feet long and four feet deep, and I'd like to make some recycle containers out of them and set them in, you know, a few locations around town. It'll be a whole lot easier than, uh, than people going down to, using that little trailer down at the, down at the county yard. Uh, <coughs> I'm to pick them up at my leisure. Once I, you know, I just dedicate a truck to it, to that particular thing, and I put all recyclables until it's full. Uh, every time I and I and I can get rid of free, the mileage is about four miles further than going to the landfill. 
That's, and every time I take over there, it's thirty-one dollars off the landfill fee. Hmm. The, the, you know, the deal would just be getting to get people to cooperate. And we have Does to. Does it have to be sorted, or would that no, be just no, to this, throw in? This is no sort. So plastic, aluminum, and paper. All those glass, glass, air bottles. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that could go in it. And then they have a machine or something that sorts it. Well, they have they have a machine that sorts some of it, and they have people that sort it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't you can't contaminate it with, uh, oh, say a mayonnaise jar with some stuff mm -hmm. in it. You know, uh, you can't you, if you contaminate any of it with foodstuffs, it's got to be loaded back up and taken to the landfill because they can't they can't mm -hmm. have it there. I see. They're worried about it being infectious for their for their people. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that, I would like to do that. It would, it would essentially mean taking over, really, the uh, the recycling from the county. There's another way to do it. Uh, uh, the, uh, I mean, I can I can put cans at everybody's place, but that that makes that makes a whole other route, and the cans ain't cheap. And that would be an upgrade, you know. And besides, and once you once you've done all this, you know, I looked into into putting uh, the big containers on the street years ago. I went over this, went over that with uh, Curly Gerard, what's his name, Gerard over there at uh, Stafford. And I looked at it, and it was it was quite expensive, and but it would have you know would have worked out only if everybody had done it. All, all the towns and county had done. Uh, and some of them didn't want to, of course. Uh, and then, and then I think it was Mel that pointed out to me that I don't really want you running down in my gutters. <laughs> and, and, and alleys are a good place for you. Yeah. <laughs> He's, I'm condemned to the alleys out of the public view. And, uh, and, and then Curly uh, discovered that himself. So we just we just dropped that whole thing. It, that was an expensive issue. Anyway. Mm. And like I say, we run a little more expensive operation because we do have three people in the truck. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, they can clean up stuff that, uh, or they're supposed to. Anyway, mm. <laughs> if something gets dropped on the ground. Some of them lose me money, but I'm not going to quit. There's no way I'm going to. They're, I mean, some of them depend on us, and I'm just not going to. I'm just not going to take them out of the loop. But anyway, I might. What I'd like to do is maybe write up a couple, three different proposals and, and give you a cost on them. But I would get them. It, it, it won't be right away. And probably the first of the year, but I'd like to I'd like to get get everybody a copy of everything and let them read them for a couple three days before I talk about them and make any suggestions. We, we, what I anticipate at this point is that either the next meeting or the first meeting in January will go actually go out for a request for services, open it up to whoever wants to provide proposals, have them do by the end of January so we can look at them the first meeting in mm -hmm. February, make some decisions at that point in time in anticipation of the contract being up in the end of March. But, but right now, just right straight on, on the face of it, $2.80 per customer is what's going to take for me to break even. Actually, I'm, I'm, I won't say break even. 
it actually is going, to, is going to take that to show a profit. Yeah, that's above what we're paying you now. Yeah, right. That's what I thought. And actually, having that, you know, our rates are actually fifteen fifty right now. Uh, we actually get thirteen cents out of it, or thirteen dollars. City gets it, and then city gets a dollar. Then we have that that fuel escalator we built in there a long time ago. And believe me, that's a pass through. That'll, that'll probably go away with time. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's just a straight pass through. Uh, can't call them so proud of us. Mm. Yeah, we like us. <laughs> hey, Terry, I've had some customers complain that. Like they put the trash out and a dog knocks it over and then they don't ever get it picked up. What can we do about that? Uh, I understand, you know, I know it's not your fault. Well, but well no, my guys should be kind of policing that up. Okay. They may not get all of it, but they should, you know, if it was, if it was close, close around them, they should be actually picking some of that stuff up. Okay. I mean, I don't want them diving under bushes for it and stuff. <laughs> but, but yeah, they should. <coughs> If they're not, I, I want to know. The only, the only problem <coughs> I have is maybe sometimes there's an oil leak down on them. Well, I fixed that truck. <laughs> I just got it back. Uh, <coughs> I just got it back from Southwest and, and fixed all the things that they broke while they were work, working on the oil leak. And uh, yeah, that one was starting to leak pretty good. I decided to give it. Give up. <laughs> <coughs> it kills the weeds in the alley. Mm -hmm. What's that? I said it kills the weeds in the alley. Well, actually, it was it, it, it was leaking bad enough that I was I was getting to the point where I was gonna I was gonna send Mel a bill for keeping down the dust on these dirt streets. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be worth the thirteen bucks if things come up with the that. This out. These, these tiny <coughs> estimates, they may be within 10%, but I don't think so. Because I'm thinking, I mean, that's the right, that's the right number. That uh, 1,462 uh, customers for the county, county. Is that right? Be all three of the municipalities plus the rule. Well, <coughs> that's all that St. John would be. Um, because there's about 600. And stuff would probably be about the same. Well, you know, I didn't have a ring like this. Uh, and this I think that great. sounds pretty. <laughs> no, I think that sounds pretty Love. close. Oh, close. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 there's Hudson and Shoe Brady. And businesses. Actually, we have. Actually, you know, I had all this written down the number of customers in every town I didn't think to bring. And there are 1,328 municipal customers, and I think Stafford has 472, and I think St. John has 539, might be 579. And then, of course, then you've got a lot of other small towns, you know. And then, uh, actually, we've kind of built up the, uh, the Rural stuff over the years. Uh, Bob Wellman didn't want to go out and do that stuff. And, and even though he had a contract with the county to do it, he he didn't want to do it. And he had a, maybe 30 rural customers when we took over. And, uh, and uh, so we, you know, with Quadro, we we lost a few customers in the towns, you know, over the years. Well, it's 14 years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. You mean literally? Uh, yeah, yeah, literally. Lost. Yeah, lost, passed, probably torn down. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, that's that's kind of where it stands, you know. I, uh, I, I don't, I don't really like the fact that we have to raise the rates because we were just getting along fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, like she said, we'll set that. Up yeah, we'll set January. it up for either the next meeting or the first meeting in January at the very latest, and get that request for services out and then we can go from there. Okay. 
We appreciate you updating us and letting us know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even sure I told you everything. <laughs> but I'm, if anybody's ever got questions, you know where to find me. A couple of three of you got my stuff. You know, about three. <laughs> you know, about. It was two or three weeks ago I came out and dumped your dumpster. I think it was on a Tuesday and back mm -hmm. in there for the guys. Uh, <laughs> Pat called, you know, Pat answered the phone and he says, he says something about Troy and a dumpster. Yeah, he dumped it to Maxville. Yeah, I went to Maxville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that's but, what he said. But Troy hadn't called me. Nobody in Maxville had, but there's a dumpster that sits by the city shop that... Uh, I put your cell phone number on all four sides of my dumpster. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but they, 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 somebody had went in there, and, and this was Tuesday, and they dumped it that morning, and that thing was heaping. Really? Uh, and so I still thought I'd done right. Because <laughs> well, I dumped that dumpster and I got back and, and uh, that's when I learned, well, yeah, it wasn't Troy right, it was Troy. Hanson. <laughs> well, but the people in Maxville, people in Maxville think I'm really nice. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You sent him the building. Well, not yet. <laughs> him a bill. No, I got, I got this board on the wall. And, and, and it says Troy here. It says, it says Kevin down here, actually. <laughs> and, and, and every time you, know, I, I, you got more marks than he does. <laughs> yeah, it's a man. Well, thanks for listening to me, folks. Yep. All right, there you go. Thank you. you coming in. Mm -hmm. And I am old enough to retire, just so you can kind of keep on this stuff. You know, throw it away. <laughs> okay. People I won't say, yep, they can have it. Thank you. Okay, I need a motion to go into executive session for non-elected personnel or position for ten minutes to include council and the mayor. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Motion carries for all. All meeting back to order. Sharon, you had something that you wanted to bring to the table? Yeah. Well, why don't they put the nativity scene in the square anymore? We we haven't got it up yet. Maybe. We are. Normally we try and, and there's been kind of a question as far as, you know, doing it on city time and a lot of times the police department will we'll get it out and they'll put it up after hours, but if you guys direct us to, we usually get volunteers to do that. They it started out as business associations. Right. And so it kind of, since we don't have business association anymore. Yeah. But we haven't had it up for several years, have we? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it got put up last year, but that's been probably the first year it didn't get put up. But yeah. It's yeah, but needing some repair. Yeah, and they really need somebody to, we don't have a problem putting it up, I okay. guarantee you. So we'll get it, we'll get it put up. Okay. What type of repair does it need? Some painting. It's, you know, just, just a figurine part of it is just needs to. Why don't you get Linda Shields to paint? What about the art department? Or art department or someone. I'll talk to I think CIT talked the to them about that once and they did it to the art department because we were going to do that as one of our projects. What if we made a donation to them for doing that? Can we do that legally or do you uh, run into... That's probably not a good idea. Um, would you be willing to volunteer some time? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I will too. Okay. So if we can figure out when you want to do it, we'll get together and we'll get the paint touched up and then once it's done we can get it put up. Okay. All right. Okay, so just let us know if you want to deliver somewhere or something like that. So what do you need some paint or what? Yeah, probably. I'll kick in for the bottom of the paint. Okay. All right. Let me know what you mean. Okay. All right, administration. John. Um the in the past, ever since I've been here They've done a Christmas light discount, meaning if anybody has any outside lights, that we give them a discount. Um, I can't remember exactly how many kilowatt hours, but it comes up to right around five dollars. And um, just checking to see if you. It usually <coughs> doesn't show on the bill, but we subtract it off on their February. <coughs> so people just come in and sign up, 
for that. And a lot so of times, if they don't sign up, they don't get it. Right. We don't go around and check the That's houses. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people have already called and said, oh, we've put up our Christmas lights, you know. And so if somebody calls us and tells us that, we write them down, you know. So is it only for that one <laughs> month, though, or is it yeah, from the time the they month. start to no. the time? Okay. just for the one month. If they keep them up all year long. Now, you know what I mean? I have no idea. So. No. But it'll show, it, it'll be, it, it'll be subtracted on the bill they get in, in February. Okay, so then do I need a motion? Yeah, we usually I put it on consent agenda, but it's been a while, you know, since we've explained that, so okay. that's what I did. I'll make a motion to go ahead and allow the Christmas site discount. I second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. How much is that? Five mm -hmm. bucks. Five it bucks? amounts to around five dollars. Okay. <laughs> Per meter, don't kill a lot. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> a little late to ask that one anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> yeah, don't do like Barb Alpers and jokingly tell me you raised twenty six thousand dollars when you really only raised two hundred. <laughs> and I didn't have anything else that you guys have something for me. Uh, uh, executive session for non-elected personnel, possible hire, uh, eight minutes, let's see. So moved. Thank you. Five. Five. Five's too short and two's too long. Oh, oh, wow. 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 You you got got it. It. A motion to hire Justin Watson as a linesman, power, power plant operator, and at that's 13 wage of $13 an hour. Second. All in favor? Well, hang on, is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Uh, as far as report, uh, we've got everyone on the new water line. The only thing we have left to do is uh, do an abandonment and do some repairs. 5th Street. 5th Street. Between, no, this is a different one. 5th oh. Street between the highway and... I don't know if it's all the way to Prairie or not. Santa Fe is the uh, nursing home. It's probably Prairie then. we got to do something about that road. It's horrible. We just spent a whole bunch of money on gravel. We might have gotten actually too much on it because it gets choppy, but we had nothing but complaints because we didn't put gravel on it. Okay, well, it's it's horrible. I've been down it in the last couple of weeks, yeah. and it well, just it beat shit it out. Well, that's that's from people driving on it with the loose gravel on it. When we get some moisture, everyone will be very happy. I've had lots of homeowners out there that are sick and tired of the mud that love the gravel, even though it's choppy. So once we get some moisture, it will get worked down in there. And then, but, uh, well, you were at the meeting, too, that, uh, you know, Danny was there about the, you want something done on the road, so we, yeah. this so, one, like you said, it's, 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 it's worse, Bordy, and we can grade it out and it'll come back, but if we get some moisture, it'll start going down in there and it'll, 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 it'll tighten up, but it's, it's, it's loose on there and it doesn't take any time. I, I agree okay. with you. I, I'm agreeing with you it's worse, Bordy, okay. but, but when we get some moisture, we'll probably be glad it's there. Well, so long as you know that after we get some moisture, if I drive down it and it's still lumpy, I'm going to come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right ahead. Hey, what about, have you had complaints about water pressure like on 2nd Street? Not on 2nd. 2nd and 4th, through there. I had a complaint on West 2nd, or West 4th, yeah. about pressure and color. Right. Well, what we found, what we had on the, the color part of it, when we hooked the uh, well up, west well up on the new line, uh, we never, when we flushed hydrants in town, we very seldom get very much discolored water, but we really ran into it even before that, so we flushed them extra, and what we've seen is, and I talked to the engineer about it, uh, he said they've seen it before, in that a, a line that's used quite a bit, and water always goes pretty much this way and then you change that and now you get a different reversal flow 
and uh, it's gotten a lot better. We we were we were having to flush about every week for a while, and we we haven't had any complaints for a couple of weeks now, I think. So, but uh, yeah, we had some discolored water, but I haven't I haven't had really anybody say anything about <coughs> low pressure. Uh, I had a complaint on Third Fourth Street. Yeah. Didn't didn't you say you had a hydrant that wouldn't put nothing out? Well, it would wouldn't put very much out. Which one was that one? Second and <coughs> gray. Yeah, that's on a four inch line. So that's, yeah. Is there anything else for Mel? Yeah, Mel, have you had, have we got any letter or anything on our house at 4th and West Street? Either we've got animal problems <coughs> and, and either want it either fixed up or tore down. You know anything about that? Yep. We put the police department have put traps out, and I think they're all there. And the, the people next door put traps out, and all they caught was cats. Because I don't. And yeah, we for for whatever reason we haven't been catching the skunks. Um, I did give them permission that you know if they have. If I did not. I told them they could not use anything above the 22. But if it was on their property and they were able to put it down with the 22, then that was fine, and we would come pick it up. Um, yeah, we have the traps. We still got trapped down there. We haven't come up with anything. So did uh, did you get did we get a letter? We got we got what we got a a letter addressing that yeah with some pictures on it. And I talked to the property owners about that. And the the door they've got a door that they're going to replace on it. And I talked to them about closing the, the garage up. I said that's you know they did did do some work on that walk-in basement deal because I think it was kind of open too. But they have done some work, but they need to do more to get it sealed up. So. Uh, I figured that letter would have came to the council three years in the past. It's just a complaint is what it is. I, mean, it's uh, I got a copy of the letter. I'll bring it next time. Okay. The only thing, our next step would be, read. our next step would be just to send an official letter giving them, you know, mm -hmm. so much time to, to address. But I think that's probably what needs to be done. Okay. Looks to me like. I'll bring that letter next council meeting. You can get it to Jonah beforehand so she can put it to the packet that. that would be great. Bob, usually if a letter comes addressed to Mayor and Council, then it goes in the packet. If it comes just as a complaint, and then it goes to the department that would handle that. So. Well, I've been asked three times about it, and I said I hadn't seen it. <laughs> well, that's, that's why. Anyone. Okay, is there anything else from Mel? Thank you, Mel. Mr. Sanders. <clears throat> the last couple fires we've had, we've had some communication issues with me talking to one of the pumpers. I can't hear. So we found a headset that they can wear in the truck and then outside as they're pumping and they'd be able to hear and talk to me. And it's going to run, I believe, $750. So are you looking for permission to spend yes. that money? Yeah. And he has that in his budget, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's exactly what you want. It's about our only choice. Just a two-person headset? Well, it's just a one-person. Oh. It, it'd basically just be for the driver, and then he gets out and pumps. Well, he can unplug it from inside the cab and go out and they have a port up. Up top where he comes, so you can plug it they in. They don't have a cordless model or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, but it's $1,100. But wouldn't that be a lot better? <coughs> well, I mean, I thought, but I didn't didn't know if we wanted to spend that much money. It's like a different frequency than the dispatch. It's just between mm -hmm. you and the pumper. No, no. Oh. He can either, he can talk, he can push one button to talk to, well, if... He can hear everything, and then he can also talk over the radio. So, because when I'm talking, when I need water or I need something done with that pumper, I'm gonna holler on the radio, so I don't have to run over and talk to him. Holler at him over the radio, and then he'll hear it. I mean, wouldn't you think the cordless would be a better route yeah. than him having to plug and unplug? Yes, yeah. I mean, kind I, of silly to me. I thought it and. I mean, if you have the money, that would be the way I would rather him go. 
and a water issue. I mean, that would be the other thing. What's the uh, What's the water issue going to entail, Mike? Well, I meant just the fact of getting something wet, and I don't know how waterproof those plug-ins are and stuff like that. No, I meant for the water hydrant. Is that going to be a big expense, or that wouldn't pass? Wouldn't uh, the one that wouldn't pass? I, I don't know. We haven't got all that report back yet. We actually, she allowed us to change hydrants. So that one didn't really count against us. Are you talking about the hydrant down on? I don't know. I just heard somebody had said we had one that wouldn't pass state. Whatever. Right. She let us change hydrants so it wouldn't go against us. So we're not going to have to spend any money on it? Not, I mean, not this year? No, I, as far as I know, it's not going to be an issue. Okay. I just know we should have got a reading of about 20 to 30, and we got a reading of 2. Will that $1,100 cover that headset, or is it a little more than that? Uh, I don't know. I. I Pretty sure it was like eleven $1 hundred and fifty dollars. So headset. you could give him an up to yeah. twelve hundred dollars. I'd make a motion to make and that to, yeah, and that was without shipping. I believe. To give or to let him spend up to twelve hundred dollars on a headset. Okay. For, uh, for you might want to go thirteen just by the time you get done with. Is that what you want to do? Yeah, I mean that would be the way that wireless headset with the speaker. And Oh yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I mean, everything's right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that when you're busy doing that, I wouldn't think you'd be worried about trying to unplug and plug yeah. and plug in. That's Plus, you're stupid. restricted by that. You're that. restricted by the well, cord. Right, I don't, I don't right. Mike, is that is it is the whole assembly waterproof? Yeah, yeah. The the that was the reason. I mean, we had talked about going with the wireless one, and I just didn't know if if we'd be willing to spend that much money, but they had. Denny's the one that it's going to use it, and uh, he had some issues. He didn't know where the where it actually plugs into, whether that'd be waterproof enough. But if we go this route, we're not even going to have to worry about yeah, it. Yeah, if you blow a fuse on that little deal, you're done. Then I, I'd say up to thirteen hundred dollars for the wireless headset. Wireless headset. services you got that he got from the fire department and was very appreciative of the fact that you guys just didn't go in ripping and tearing and which would have resulted in it probably going to the ground. Right. So he was very, very pleased with the service. Where was that at? Um, 311 West 9th. Cold, cold, cold. Yeah. Chief Sailor? I'm going to come pull up the sheriff. It's alright. Yep. I wanted to uh, reapproach and ask you guys to uh, reconsider um, some things and some ideas in reference to our lead balances. Um, I know last year um, when it was uh, when I had requested that you guys pay out stuff that we weren't able to use because of our staffing levels, um, the decision was made that you would pay it out then, but in the future, um, if we weren't able to lose it, then we were just, or use it, then we were just going to lose it. Um, I believe in, in going over, in coming up with some ideas that we might be able to alleviate that. Obviously not this year because this year is pretty much done. Um, but as far as next year, um, first of all, I would ask again that you guys would consider um, paying out what some of the stuff that we weren't able to use this year, uh, basically because of our staffing levels. Um, mine is high in particular because um, I did what you guys asked me to do as the chief, as the one on salary, um, to cover every single hour that wasn't covered by the other guys. Um, and because my days off were on the weekends, obviously that's primarily the time they're taken off. Um, so that, because I was working a lot of my days off to cover their vacation time, that made it difficult for me to use mine. Um, something else I would, I think that a way that we would be able to get away from this, these issues, um, 
I know before I came here when I worked for the state, I know the county does it. Um, when somebody works the holiday, they're paid double time instead of given that holiday to use as a day off um, on the other time. If there was some way we could go to a system like that to where, you know, because we're going to have a minimum of two officers working um, every holiday, um, if we could go to a system where they're compensated for working the holiday instead of giving the, the time off, then that's going to alleviate 10 holidays a year that aren't going to have to be made up and try to take, be taken off. So you're saying your officers are willing to give up holidays if they get paid double or they get time and a half? Well, then, so I, we can alleviate all the leave time. That's just holidays. It's not vacation time. Okay. I'm uh, this. This is. A, I'm, I'm trying to come up with an idea to make it to where we can actually use the time instead of being given a benefit that we can't actually use. Now, obviously, your your person that uh, would be off on that holiday would be paid for not working because they were given a holiday, and then the ones that were working that holiday would be compensated the double time for working the holiday. Well, I don't, I don't know about that, but on the leave carryover, I mean, you had a year that you've known what the rules were or what, what the council wanted. Um, to me, we, we can't be bending this rule every time, otherwise there's no need to have any rules on the book. Um, if I speed through the, through the center of town, um, because I'm, I'm in a hurry twice a week, you know, I mean, there's no there break, I mean, a rule's a rule to me. Right. I, and I understand that. And, and to me, I mean, that's part of your job is to figure out how these guys and you guys can get that on your schedule. Well, there, there and, is. And we gave you a year to do that. You're right. And, and there is some ways we can do that. One of, the, one of the issues that we come up with that, though, as far as me being the chief, is the fact that it's, it's, it's on my back of my conscience when I'm working an officer two or three weeks in a row without a day off, and some of those some 24-hour shifts to cover everything. I'm the one that has to go to their family and tell them if something happens to them because they were tired or they got their butt kicked on the side of the road because they had been working 24 hours straight and somebody decided to fight with them. Well, I'm not saying that's a good situation. I'm just saying. Well, I'm, I'm that, just that telling you, you why, that why it's year, not always possible to get the time burned. You, you've had over a year since this, since we talked about this leave and, and all this, and no one. I know. And, and a whole year. And a year later, now all of a sudden, you're saying maybe you have an idea how to fix it. We should have been worrying about that 12 months ago. Not now. Well, the worst you can say is no. I'm just trying to figure out a right. way that we can figure something out because it's, it's it's the decision of the council as far as our staffing that's making it very difficult for us to get the time used. Exactly. And it, and it for me, it's it's just kind of difficult to to know that we we're, we're kind of set aside. We're we're not given the same because we have to work and cover 24 hours a day. We're not afforded the same opportunities as the rest of the city department to get our time burned. Well, I, I've said this before, Adam. Cover the town while we're asleep, as the whole other citizens. Take your time off them during the day. Run one officer a couple hours, an hour in the morning when people, when the kids go to school. But when they get break for dinner, and at three o'clock, and take your time off in between. In the so who, who answers who answers the calls in between? What what's the majority time that you have theft or you have a major problem in a St. John? The it's store happened from ten o'clock in the morning or at night until six o'clock in the morning. That's, That's correct. Wrong. No, it's not. Nope, statistically the majority of our heavy calls come between the hours of 6 in the evening and midnight. Okay. As far as domestic violence calls, um, the, the ones where an officer presence is absolutely needed. 
And as I've said before, I am not willing as the chief of this department to not have somebody on duty while that school is in session. Because I'm not going to have somebody have to take 20 minutes to throw all their gear on to respond to something that's happening there. That's, that's not something I'm willing to do. Well, I, could, I can remember when I was a kid going to school, there was a cop sitting over there from about 7.30 to 1 until about 8.30. Mm -hmm. There was no cop in the school at all. And then he'd come back at about 12.15 when we got out for lunch. And he worked, he was there for the, the 30 minutes or 45 that we were off. Mm -hmm. He'd come back at 3.30 and was there at about 4.15. And that was all. That's all you see in the cop around the school. Why won't that work today? Because times have changed. When you were in school, you didn't have people coming into schools with guns and shoot people. Oh, shit. <clears throat> Like I said, it's, it's ideas. I mean, the worst you can say is no, we're still going to keep rolling and doing business no matter what happens. Well, I'd like to put it to a vote, just so that it's on record. Do I have a motion to approve the carryover for the police department? No motions, it dies for the lack thereof. No report as chief? Yep, the only thing I have as far as uh, the uh, fire went on 9th Street, um, I just want to take the time to publicly recognize Officer Brown uh, for his actions. Uh, when he got to the house, the uh, property owner was still inside the house trying to put out the fire. Um, and the property owner didn't realize that the south side of the house was starting to catch fire. Um, and so uh, Charlie took it upon himself to essentially enter a burning house and, and get the, the property owner out. So I'm taking the, you know, I want to recognize him and then in the future there will be a formal recognition for a, uh, um, basically a, a commendation for his actions because that's above and beyond what he had to do. Cool. That's it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there any new business? Under old business, we have the financial planning goal, financial goal planning workshop this Saturday at the in the community room of the library from eight in the morning until noon. Um, I will be getting an agenda to council members and city staff. Hopefully tomorrow sometime. Um, it is going to be a very informal session. In that, I want us to be able to talk about anything and everything that we need to, um, and we'll work through if we get done before time we'll adjourn early and if we still have stuff to go over we'll schedule another session. So. Notice for coming. Okay. And uh, put it on the website as well. Is there any further business? I make a motion to adjourn if there ain't. I'm all in favor?